Hey Pod Squad, welcome back. I'm Diksha. My name is Yoda. And we're both fourth year podiatric medical students. So we just finished our whole experience with clerkships and we wanted to help you choose clerkships yourselves. Now, just, just taking into consideration a warning, uh, you don't have to follow everything we're about to talk about. This isn't a mandatory thing at all. Yeah, this is just our list, our priorities, and you can just use whatever priorities you want to use and take some of what, what our priorities are and just make up your list. Um, just to preface this video real quick is that to really help with your priorities, uh, we mentioned this in another video, we'll link that in the description down below as well as up in the link up there somewhere in the video. Um, visit programs that will help really dictate your priorities because now you're going to sort of see what a program is like and you're starting to formulate questions about what you like about that program, what are some things you don't like about a certain program, and then that can help dictate your priorities. Um, and if you can't visit a program, try to get in contact with residents and attendings. Um, that is probably the second best option for you to do, and try to do that via email. If you have the person number, um, you can text them or call them. Uh, I usually try to call residents uh, because, uh, honestly, I like holding a real conversation with people. So, um, yeah, that's something we wanted to really start off before going into our first tip. Okay, so number one, consider your environment. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about, do you want independence or do you want step-by-step -step instructions when it comes to everything that you're doing as a resident? Um, a, lot of, a lot of different programs will be one or the other, or they'll be in the middle, they'll be both. So consider that. And also think about, do you have a family, meaning do you have a spouse, a partner, a baby, kids that you'd like to spend some time with and you require more time with them. Then think about that when it comes to programs because there's certain programs that understand that and they do give you a lot of spare time for that. Right. Um, and then also think something that's important to me and to Yona um, is do you want an environment where you are really close with your, resi your co-residents, where you're all going out for socializing, um, where you can you can act you can speak to your attendings openly about anything and any of your concerns. Do you want that from your program? Then uh, of course there's people who don't want that and they'd rather have that again that independence uh, to be able to do their own thing. Right. So it's up to you. Okay, number two. Number location. two location. Yes. Um, for me, I was dead set that I wanted to be in California. Uh, before applying to even clerkships. I knew all my clerkships were gonna be in California. However, I kind of went against that just because um, I really wanted to see what other programs were like. Uh, I think externships are the best time for you to visit programs, the only time for you to really see what a program is really like. Um, so I sort of traveled around different states to see what their programs were like and to really ask myself if California is really the right place for me or if there's a program out there that really suits my needs and if I can see myself being actually in that program for uh, three years and maybe possibly the rest of my life. So um, that's something to really consider and that's something really high on our priority list. Perfect, I agree with all of that. Um, number three, academics. Yeah, so academics. Uh, I, I would say I'm an academic now and Diksha is also very into academics and I was looking into programs that had at least two to three academics per week and um, again, my whole philosophy is that academics is the foundation for us uh, residents and podiatrists to uh, learn something and that, and then apply that in the OR setting or the clinical setting. Uh, to be a good doctor is to really learn from what's written out there from historical information and then sort of modify that as you will. So academics is, for me is really important and also I want to be a uh, possible guest lecture one day for my classes or back for Samuel Merritt. So I, I want to be part of that academic groove. Um, but also academics is a little bit different because um, academics can also include workshops and bone saw labs and um, cadaver labs. So, so that's considered part of academics for programs. Um, so also be aware of that because that hands-on experience you get with some of these workshops is really crucial and you can apply that to the OR setting, you know? Yeah, and then for the other side of that is Academics, no matter where you go as residents, is going to be crucial. I mean, just for the rest of your life. Um, so what Yona and I are talking about is referring to formal academics. And mm -hmm. then that structure that's already set 
in the residency programs where, like he was saying, a, f a few hours uh, a week or it just depends. Right. Um, yeah. But what you could also look for is just know that at the end of the day, it's it's on you as well. So if a program doesn't have the formal academics, it, you don't care for that because it does require work. Just to let you know, we're not saying people are just you know lecturing at us and we're taking it in. This is no longer school. Um, you actually have to put in the work for these. But uh, you also, if you're not going to a program with the formal structure, then you're you're doing the reading on your own anyways. So just keep that in mind. Is if you want one or the other. Yeah, exactly. Okay, number four, relationship with ortho. So what we mean by that is sometimes in residencies, uh, or in all residencies, this is something to consider. If you are interested in surgery, if you're interested in certain types of surgery, just keep in mind that, of course, there are there are going to be programs that don't have ortho at all. Mm -hmm. um, other like orthopedic surgeons, I'm saying they don't have orthopedic surgeons at all. And you, as the podiatric resident, represent the ortho. Um, yeah. And then there's those that do have it, and you just have to consider. Um, sometimes there will be certain hospitals that will take certain cases, like ankle fractures, for example, and they'll send those to the ortho residents instead of the podiatry residents. Um, so if those are the kind of cases that you're interested in, just ask ask these programs, see, oh my gosh, this is what I'm really interested in and I would want a chance to practice my skills with that kind of surgery, mm -hmm. then maybe that's not your residency that program. That's not the residency program for you. Just keep that in mind. And just one more caveat to that is that that can also affect your numbers. Um, you will hit all your numbers, don't get me wrong, for the residency programs because they're certified residencies. Um, but if you want to do more so trauma and you feel like trauma is just being a little bit in the lower end of the spectrum just because maybe possibly ortho relationship or that hospital doesn't just do a lot of trauma, it's not like a level one trauma hospital, uh, consider that as well because that also plays a little key role. That's a good one actually. Um, fifth point, number of residents. Right off the bat, me and Diksha did not want to go to a pr program that had one person residencies uh, because we thought that A, that's, a, that's probably a lot of work on the resident, and B, we are social butterflies. We like to talk to a lot of people, as you can tell, um, and we wanted to just have that sort of family relationship with other residents and just be friends with them and go out, you know, because you want to have a life in residency if you can, uh, try, to, uh, try to make some sort of life. Um, if, if you want. If you want. Not yeah. everyone's like that. Uh, but that doesn't mean one person residencies are bad in, in any way. The positives are also that some programs with one person residencies could have a great lifestyle, something that you really want. And also, you get a lot of experience as yes. a one person. Yes. Um, on the flip side, there's also programs that have up to seven, eight residents, and that's a lot of residents. So. Um, if you're really into that social aspect and you really want to have that big family, you can go for that. Um, just be careful because sometimes the uh, surgical cases, hopefully there there's enough to go all around. I don't know. I can't speak about that. But that's, again, something to consider. Yeah. And then number six, right? We already went over. Yeah. So number six, research. Uh, that's something that I really care about. Uh, research for me could mean being in a program that actually has, like academics, they have a formal research requirement. Um, there's, there's residencies like that, but a lot of them that I looked into, I didn't cross them off my list if they didn't have the formal requirement because there are going to be residencies where uh, there are attendings that you can speak to that are already going through their own, their own research, so you can speak to them about it, or they're really open to trying out your, your ideas that you have. So consider that as well. Um, seventh point, driving. Uh, this to me was more of a priority than so a lot of people would say. Um, again, I was looking at programs again that uh, I wanted to be in one central hub, like one hospital, and I don't want to drive to a million other hospitals during the day. And I also don't want to drive 45 plus minutes to a different hospital that one day either. So again, I just, I'm just i just not the biggest guy who likes to drive and and you know, it's, it gets boring for me and I just don't like driving so much. So yeah, that's something small that I put on my priority list. Yeah, and then, and then of course I was talking to him about, there's, there's certain people that love that because their, their whole thought process is, 
okay, if I'm going to an incredible hospital to see incredible cases, why not make that 45 plus drive, 45 minute plus drive? But yeah, everyone's different. Uh, number eight, benefits of a program. Um, yeah, so again, you can find a lot, all the benefits basically for a program in the Casper website for different clerkship programs. Uh, basically, um, there's benefits such as CME money, uh, travel stipend money, moving uh, stipend money, um, money to go to ACFAS or different conferences for workshops. Um, yeah, so some programs case, offers, offers that. Yeah, yeah sorry. And, and in case you all didn't know, that also can count towards, money can count towards um, your board exams yeah, as well. Exactly. Which is going to get pricey. Yeah, as you and know. some programs actually can pay for your board exam to take it. So that's something you consider. Little benefits like that long, can go a long way for your financial um, success. Okay, and then last but not least is, this is very specific to clerkships in general. Make sure when you're planning, um, we're going to, we're actually going to have an, another video on how to sign up for clerkships. So we'll go into the specifics. We know when, when we were going through it, it's so hard. It's hard. There's, yeah, it's ugh, hard. there's just not enough explanation, I feel like, out there. And you're, you're just, you're pretty much afraid while you're signing up for those. So we're there for you. We'll make a video on that. But, um, just consider when you are signing up, think about geographic location, If especially if you're driving. Because say, we're gonna give an example of California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. When, instead of um, instead of planning it so that you're signing up for, for, I don't know, for Texas first and then California, even though you're from California, and then you're, you know, you're going all over the place, that's gonna make it really hard on you, trust me. Just try to go from one location to the next border, to the next border, you know. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's easier that way. Or however however you're doing it with the states, do it so that it makes sense for you when you're driving. Exactly. Um, okay. So that's basically our priority list. Those are yeah. some of the key points that we listed out. If there's any key points that you guys want to list out or if you feel like we left out in this video, please leave a comment down in the, uh, a, a comment in the section down below because this is gonna help lots of other students um, who are probably gonna see this video maybe in the future. Um, and if you guys have any questions or concerns, please shoot us a message uh, at our email, the, uh, the dpmjourney at gmail.com or shoot us a message on Instagram uh, the at the podiatry journey. And um, also hit the like and subscribe button down below because we're gonna be making more videos because we are done with everything that we've done, uh, we dealt with our fourth year. Um, so be on the lookout for those videos because those are going to be very helpful, especially for you underclassmen, um, uh, first, or second, and third year podiatry students. Um, so with that being said, Pod Squad, signing, signing out. out. Take care, guys.